All right, we may not want to admit it yet, but winter is right around the corner. So for many of us, that can mean the return of dry, irritated, itchy skin. Dr. Emily Kimeg is here to provide some easy tips and tricks to prepare our largest organ for the harshest season. And I think a lot of people forget that our skin is an organ. We're number one. Yes. yes. We're number one organ. It's yeah. the largest one. we got to take care of it. Yes. Absolutely. So how do you deal with the, the, the harsher weather mm -hmm. and how it attacks our skin? That means you have to change like your moisturizers, I would assume. It does. I mean, winter's rough on so many levels, but when it comes to our skin, there's a couple factors at play. And the first is is that the air dries out, right? So that level of moisture drops in the air. We turn the heat on in the house. Yeah. We turn mm -hmm. it on the office, the car. All that dry air around us, it's drying our skin out more. And then we're taking longer, hotter showers and baths, mm -hmm. right? Because we want to warm up a little mm -hmm. bit. Everybody does it. But when you think about it, if you think you're adding that moisture back to your skin, you're actually stripping it away more and you're drying it out more. So okay. you have this combination of dry air, hot water, dry, itchy skin. So there's a lot of things that we can start now to combat that. Okay, so we'd start with more, or, or, sorry, our body shampoo or our hair shampoo, does all that have to change? Or can our soaps stay the same and then we just change the moisturizers? A lot of times it's just using them more consistently. Okay. So sometimes you're going to want to move to something that's a little heavier or a little bit thicker. So when I talk about some of these ingredients, so what you want to look for in your moisturizer, first and foremost, is something that doesn't have a lot of added ingredients. So okay. no extra dyes, fragrances, or perfumes. We love using that stuff. It smells great. It mm -hmm. feels great on our skin, but can actually dry us out more. So one of the things you want to look for is something that contains dimethicone. So this is a product from Aveeno and dimethicone is a silicone based polymer and what it does is it sits on the skin. It's what gives the lotion its kind of glide, that feel on the surface of our skin. It's locking that moisture in so the water's not escaping. Okay. And this is really safe to use. It's so safe it's for, you could use it, even use it on babies. That's why I brought this one in. Mm -hmm. um, and then I transition people to using things that come in tubs and tubes. Okay? Oh, yes. So those things tend to moisture dries a lot better than things that come in pumps. So if you think about a pump, right, you have to thin it out to get it to go up the pump, and they do that by adding water. It's like trying to drink like a Frosty out of a, like a coffee straw. It's just not going to work. Right. Right. So you want to use something that's a little bit thicker. So I have some examples of those. So this is a product from CeraVe. Um, this has ceramides in it, which are the natural oils on the surface of our skin. And these ceramides are getting stripped away from our skin by the dry air, by the hot water. And so we're adding those back with that. Vanna cream is a nice, great product. That's a nice, thick moisturizing. It comes in a tub. It does have a pump, but it's still pretty thick. Okay. Um, and it's free of a lot of different parabens, dyes, all sorts of things that can aggravate our skin. And then I love good old good Vaseline. Old fashioned, yeah. Still works. It's it been does. around since 1872, if you'll believe a it. A lot of people get worried because it's petroleum gel. Yes. Yeah, it's greasy. Yeah, it is greasy. It's greasy. It's a little bit goopy. There's been some concern about petroleum. It's yes. FDA approved. It is safe to use. And it's the best emollient. So it really really locks that moisture in, prevents further loss. Yeah, it doesn't moisturize. It just locks it what's already there. in the skin. It does, but yeah. I love using it. It's not practical for day to day, but if you've got dry, cracked skin on your hands and feet, mm -hmm. throw this on at night, throw a pair of cotton gloves on, pair of cotton socks. It really helps to soak it up. I heard this once too, and I don't, so I don't know if this is correct, that even if, if you let your, like your face get too dry out, that your skin will start producing more oil, and then does your skin get oilier if you don't get the moisture balance correct? Everybody's skin is a little bit different, okay. so we all have a different level of oil production. A lot of it depends on hormones, some of it's age. Um, and so you do want to make sure that you're repairing that barrier. And so things that have ceramides, hyaluronic acid are going to help to keep that in balance for you in the winter time. Got it. Okay. All right. Now when it comes to soaps, a lot of people don't realize this, but soap can actually dry your skin sure down. Can. Yeah. It so it. it strips it. So a lot, again, with the soaps, you want to use things that are again, fragrance free, dye free. Um, and a lot of soaps will have moisturizers added back into them. So for example, this is from Neutrogena. This is their Hydro Boost line that has something called hyaluronic acid in it, mm -hmm. and that binds water. So it plumps it up, and it, it just kind of holds that water into the skin. Mm -hmm. This is from La Roche-Posay. This is a lotion cleanser. So for my patients with very sensitive skin, I'll recommend a lotion cleanser that doesn't foam or bubble. So it's not mm -hmm. stripping your skin. And then this one has that added ingredient of ceramide. So again, you're adding some of those oils back. So to your point earlier, it's not necessarily about changing your products. It's using them differently and using products 
products that have more than one um, ingredient in them to achieve those goals of moisturization. So we're, we're in the summer and sometimes yeah. in spring, we're seeing a lot more serums. You really do want to transition though to those more moisturizers. Yeah, and you can still use your serums. Okay. You know, we all want to make sure that we're taking care of our skin for anti-aging and prevention. And that's something you want to make sure that you're doing consistently over time, right? Because those are results that don't happen right away. Right. And so you can still use those. But what I have my patients do is add some of these things afterwards. So you use your serum, your anti-aging serum, your retinol, mm -hmm. you add it, you add some of that moisture back because those retinols can be very drying on the skin any day of the week, right. but in the winter even more so. So I'll recommend one of these products that has a ceramide in it, hyaluronic acid, and put it right on top. The other tip that I'll give is if you're getting really dry with your retinol or your anti-aging regimen is do this moisturizer sandwich. So it's this concept of putting on a layer of moisturizer first, then the retinol or the anti-aging product, and then another layer of moisturizer. So you're really sandwiching it and really hydrating okay. your skin. Ah. All right, and just real quickly, humidifiers mm -hmm. are good. Humidifiers are great. Hot yeah. showers are bad. They're not great. That's, okay. that's a controversial topic in my household. So short five to 10 minute showers, lukewarm to warm, not hot. But also don't forget sunscreen, even though we're winter. Don't forget the sun, thank you. Yeah. Thank, no, don't forget I'm your sunscreen. sunscreen. I, so am I, so am I. <laughs> okay. All right. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, ChicagoDerm1765.com is where you find more information. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.